Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Emmy's hosts were warned but didn't listen. Now they're going to pay big for Christian crackhead rant. There was a time when Hollywood actually produced material that promoted good morals and faith. Families in TV shows and movies actually prayed, went to church, believed in God, etc. That was a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, as they would say. Today's Hollywood is basically anti-Christian. Not only in the entertainment industry's productions, but in the lifestyles of those who make their livings starring on the big and small screens. That fact was on display at this year's Emmys. Fox News reported. The 70th annual Emmy Awards kicked off with a slew of political jokes and jabs as expected. But one remark from co-host Michael Che left many viewers upset. During Che's opening monologue with his fellow Saturday Night Live star Colin Yost, Che explained that his mother would not be watching the show on Monday night. My mother is not watching, Che said. She says she doesn't like watching white award shows because you guys don't thank Jesus enough. He continued, that's true. The only white people that thank Jesus are Republicans and ex-crackheads. The joke didn't sit well with some viewers who took to Twitter to complain. OK at daytime Emmys hashtag Michael Che I am not a Republican neither an ex-crackhead do I get to thank hashtag Jesus according to your standards? I'm a believer in and will thank Jesus. Really bad writing, one user wrote. More Colin Just and Michael Che's opening monologue bombed harder than I ever could have dreamed, another tweeted. Michael Che, do not knock JC, Jesus is just all right with me. This has to be one of the dumbest remarks I've ever heard from some Hollywood actor. Absolutely outrageous. Another tweet read. Before Che and Yost took the stage, the Emmys started with a song whose chorus was resolved it, a comic ode to the diversity of nominees, and Hollywood self-satisfaction. Saturday Night Live stars and Emmy nominees Monday Night Kate McKinnon and Kenan Thompson started the song pointing out that Sandra Oh could become the first woman of Asian descent to win an Emmy. The comedian sang, There were none, now there's one, so we're done. They were joined by Titia Spurgis, Kristen Bell, Sterling K. Brown and Ricky Martin, who declared the song too white and gave it a Latin turn. Andy Samberg showed up to ask in song if there was a place for a straight white male in the song before being sent off. Martin and Samberg were met with loud cheers inside Microsoft Theater. Others also voiced their disappointment on social media. Early in the 20th century up until the 1950s, Hollywood was actually kept in check by state and local governments, and also by religious leaders. According to Faith Wire, local governments essentially regulated films from 1915 until 1952. Thomas Doherty, professor of American Studies at Brandeis University, explained to author Billy Hallowell that movies had no First Amendment rights which means state censorship boards, city censorship boards, a sheriff who didn't like the film, could basically go in and shut down the movie. Between the pressure from faith leaders and the government intrusion into the matter, it didn't take long for Hollywood to opt for self-censorship, with the Motion Picture Producers and Distributors of America, an organization that later became the Motion Picture Association of America, creating a moral code that Hollywood studios subscribe to when releasing films. Industry insiders came together to form the organization, which was headed by former politician William H. Hayes from 1922 to 1945, as an effort to stave off government censorship. The Motion Picture Producers and Distributors of America, under Hayes's leadership, set up a series of control measures aimed at trying to keep Hollywood in check. Religious leaders concerned with what was coming out of Tinseltown also acted. Christian leaders actually played an in-depth role in shaping what was coming out of Hollywood at the time, something that would seem unimaginable today. Roman Catholics were upset about the moral and social content of Hollywood cinema in the 1920s, so in around 1930, a couple prominent Catholics, a guy named Martin Quigley, who edited Motion Picture Herald, and a devout Catholic, a big-time Catholic layman and a Jesuit priest, named Father Daniel A. Lord, got together and wrote a moral code for the movies, Doherty explained. It had a moral philosophy, and then a list of prescriptions, things you should do, things you couldn't do. It was this production code that offered up strict guidance for what would absolutely not be tolerated in Hollywood productions. Sex, crime, offensive language, nudity, illegal drug use, the ridicule of religion, and certain other behaviors were cracked down on. Hollywood took note of the pressure coming from government and people of faith. This pushback created problems for movie moguls, which led to the creation of the Production Code Administration to ensure that the movie industry's moral code that had been ignored since 1930 would finally be upheld, that move was more successful. 
So, aside from the censorship concerns, why did Hollywood create and finally come to comply with the code? Much of the motivation boiled down to money, according to PBS. Hayes was reportedly able to convince studios that abiding by the production code was the most prudent path forward. After all, if they didn't, they would end up doling out more money to change films once government censorship boards got a hold of them. Perhaps it's time for religious leaders to begin urging their flocks to shun Hollywood again until it gets its act together. Maybe all of the different denominations, Catholic, Protestant, Mormon, etc., working together, can make a difference. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.